Okay, today we're going to show you some LogoPress 3 Bill of Materials. And as you may recall, all of these drawings are created semi-automatically by LogoPress. So that Bill of Materials drawing was already there, ready for me to open. So I'm going to change the scale of it, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to go very fast because I missed it. I'm going to go very fast because there's a lot to cover in less than 10 minutes. So I'm just going to make this view flat just so that you can see. You can, uh, you can do whatever you want. Everything is very, very flexible in LogoPress. Now we've got to change our display states. You could see on those other views, if you look back, that the strip was shown, so I have to go to these display states and turn the strip off. And now when we get back to these drawings, now the strip isn't shown. So that's what we need to insert the bomb, the bill of materials. We're going to start by selecting these two views and go to SolidWorks Automatic Balloon and change to top. This is real time change to balloon faces and this balloon text is set to item number right now that's going to change later and insert bill of materials select this view change to split number for standard components overwrite the current numbers and we're going to start with 900 for the standard components and this quickly, we numbered everything. You can see we've got a lot of socketed cap screws in here as well. We don't want to include those in a bill of materials, nor do we want to include dowel pins. And we'll also turn off the guide posts and the bushings. And now you can see all those things are unchecked. Then I'm going to take the four standard components that are found they're the only four that are in the small drawing we've got here, and I'm going to lock them. So those numbers won't be able to change because they're locked. A great, great feature of LogoPress. And it's generating the bill of materials, and I'm ready to insert it. And we're about three minutes into this. Again, real time. Anchor it up there, and let's see, first I'm going to, these that we deselected, the socketed cap screws and some other standard components show up without numbers, so we have to delete those balloons out of there. There we go, and I'm going to excuse me, make some room for some additional balloons I'm going to add. Slide this one over too. And go to use the SolidWorks broken out section view. So this is going to cut a hole, basically, just visually, in this plate so that we can see. We'll go up to there. So we can see the nitrogen cylinder and the spool that are underneath there. There we go. And now I'm going to balloon those. Balloon the spool. Balloon the nitrogen cylinder. And again, there's lots of different options. It's very flexible. Let's align these evenly. And we'll just align them also horizontally because that's important for the sorting in case one is off just a little bit from the others. 
these will all be in line. I'm just going to space them nicely, but horizontally they'll be fine because I didn't add anything. And you could see there that the numbers were out of place, they're out of order. We'll edit and update the tables. Again, this is the LogoPress 3 bill of materials. And we're now going to change to global numbering according to the balloon's positioning order. We need to check this from the bottom to top. And we're going to start with 100. And the things with the asterisks are all going to change. And look down. Oh, I forgot to do one thing yet. Because they're still a little bit goofy. And I just remembered I forgot to set the number nomenclature. I need to select all of the balloons. We can just do that with a window. And we're going to change the balloon text from an item number to a custom property. And this is a LogoPress custom property. Number nomens, number nomenclature, it's short for. And once we do that, boom, now we've got our order nicely. And you can see the standard components start with 900. And I like to take the ones that are oddball, if you will, the purchase components, and pull those up out of the way. I've done this since I drew on the board. Just think it's easier to have them stand out to the tool maker. Okay, and we'll edit and, up, edit and update tables again. And once more, we'll go to our numbering settings. And this time we'll change the order for both the lower, or all three, the lower, middle, and upper. Start with 100 on the lower, overwrite what's there, 200 for the middle, and 300 for the upper. Again, this is something I've, I usually do. I like that as a tool maker, when you see a detail number of 300, you know it's in the upper. 200, you know it's in the middle. And again, you can set whatever numbers you want. This is just what I've chosen for this example. That reorders everything in the bill of materials and resequences the balloons. Nothing changed here because we are already starting with 100. But up here you can see we're 300. There's the 200, that's the stripper plate. And there are purchased components, a couple of them. and take a quick look at the bill of materials and we automatically determine the size of these components. You don't have to have reference dimensions on them. We'll automatically determine the bounding box. Again, a logo press feature. There's our purchase components separated nicely at the end of the list, all the part numbers, and that's logo press 3 bill of materials.